This is a pair of uh, Digit Now wildlife or trail cameras. Um, we tend to use them mainly to keep my wildlife in the garden. Hedgehogs come in at night and birds coming in throughout the day. And sometimes other things like uh, wood mice and uh, uh, even rats. And sometimes very unwelcome visitors like cats and so on, which is nice to know about. Although I do seem to stop them. Yeah, they're both the same. It comes with the normal instruction booklet and the format is probably pretty familiar to most people who've had one of these because they're all very uh, similar uh, cameras. So just a, there's a quick start guide here, so it just tells you to open up between either four or eight AA batteries. Oops, that's it. Okay. So here is the camera, they're quite bulky, so nice and solid. Um, you get so you get uh, loops on the back for a strap and there's a lock here that you can padlock through and clips here which seem to be reasonably solid so they should be reasonably easy uh, everything's covered with protective covers so we need to take them off in a minute open it up and inside here there's the battery compartment and the batteries go side by side so they're nice and uh, easy to get in and out and there's a waterproof seal here. Buy of the camera. There's the uh, full size SD card there. I signed a full size one, a bit less fiddly than a TF, so I'm quite pleased it's got that. There's the set and active button there. And then on the bottom, there's a socket for a, a DC power supply, which aren't, in my case I don't have. And then there's the normal menu buttons here, which work the way they do on all the cameras, and it's explained quite clearly in the instructions. Well, you can either put four or eight in. I'm going to put eight in because they last longer with eight in. And you need to be reasonably careful. There's little um, cradles there to make sure the batteries stay straight. But you do want to try and make sure that they do go straight. And the actual battery contacts here are nicely protected. I did have a wildlife camera where the battery uh, connections weren't protected like that for the positive end. And the battery managed to short out. I don't think that's going to happen on this camera. That should be completely impossible on this camera and with these nice long springs the batteries are nice and easy to get in and out just double check to make sure they're all the right way around which they are it's turned itself on oh that's because it's in set mode let's turn it off so there we are ready to go just going to get the memory card so along the bottom edge as well as the uh, sd card slot you have a mini usb slot and you have a power connector um, so uh, there, and there's a cover for it, the rainproof cover for it there in the case. So that's uh, all the things along the bottom for you. So click on menu, and we want to first of all choose mode, photo, or video. I'm going to choose video on this camera. Uh, photo quality, yeah, forget about the pixel. First video. So there's various things you will need to set up, like the date and the time, um, and um, you can set things like the video resolution and so on, and the and the fo photo resolution. All the menus work the same way. You click on um, OK to go into a menu, and menu to step back out of it, and use the up and down arrows to make selections, and occasionally the sideways arrows. So it's all fairly easy to set up, and it works exactly the same way as all my other wildlife cameras with similar screens and menus. So I'll start off with a photo of the two cameras ready for action in my garden. And this is a photo I sort of more or less accidentally took when I was setting the camera up, just to show you what the camera can do in daylight. This is a very much enlarged photograph of a small bird. And here is a little video clip of one of our star performers. The magpies are often in and out of our garden. And here we have a whole squabble of starlings and also also a little sparrow feeding quite happily while they're busy at it. And in a minute they're all going to get spooked and fly off for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. And here we have a couple of hedgehogs at the top there. One of them's quite happily drinking the water and the other one is a bit of a bully, comes and pushes him or her off and pushes him or her around for a while. I don't think he's trying to mate with her. I think it is just aggression over territory. And here he is going to claim his prize of the food that we've put inside the hedgehog shelter for them. 